time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. gentleman who has just stopped here a few minutes from Hollywood where he is making a picture, tip on a dead jockey, my live wire husband, Martin Gable. And on my left, a girl whose column, the voice of Broadway, begins appearing in the sophisticated pages of the San Francisco Call Bulletin. Tomorrow, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. On my left, our peripatetic publisher panelist, who has just returned from his wanderings, Mr. Bennett Cerf. If you were watching this show last Sunday, you might have heard a certain character there on asking for a blizzard during the past week. Well, I wandered through East Lansing and St. Louis and Kansas City and Maryville and Tokyo. And Dorothy was out in Phoenix, and the sun was shining brightly. But in Lincoln, Nebraska, the other day, I got it. So now I'd like you to meet the rainmaker, John Charles <laughs> Bennett. I must say, Bennett, that's going to be my last foray at making weather. I was a little bit alarmed. I got a telegram from my friend George Turner last Thursday from Lincoln. He says it's snowing quite heavily, and I thought everybody out there would be mad at me. But Bennett saw the governor, and the governor said he's quite pleased with me because they need the moisture. <laughs> well, I'm not going to talk about moisture tonight. I won't get in trouble if I keep it up, but I would welcome you all once again to What's My Line. And I would say to the panel that... Uh, they're going to have a lot of fun tonight. They can begin it with putting their blindfolds on right now, please. We'll have a mystery guest, famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. Panel, the blindfolds all in place? Yes, sir. Good. Will our first contestant come in and sign in, please? Are you familiar with the way we keep score? All right, then let's let the folks at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. <laughs> Panel, it goes without saying that there's an area of identification having to do with costuming or some other physical manifestation which has asked uh, or made it necessary for us to ask you to put on your blindfolds. I would warn you further that... Uh, we feel there might be some area of identification in the voice, too, so we probably will use a whistle, one being yes and two being no, at least for a little while, to see what you can do. I'll tell you that our guest is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, do you think that uh, anyone on this panel would know your voice personally, not just over the radio? That's yes. Uh, is it possible that someone, if not more than one on this panel, has talked to you vis-a-vis? -vis? And you work for yourself. Uh, do you perform services? Could anyone on this panel hire you or hire your services? Is that a yes, too? That's a yes, too. Mm -hmm. uh, would we be better off or happier having had your services? Uh, that is actually meant to be an extremely affirmative yes. Oh. Not a no. <laughs> uh, do you work indoors rather than outdoors? Um, but you work for yourself. Do you go from place to place? 
That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, would you say that your work is more non-athletic than athletic? <whistles> that eliminates baseball. Uh, Why would we hire a baseball player? To hit, hit your husband over the head with. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> do you have anything whatever to do with the entertainment industry? Yes. Now, I would say, if uh, our guest will excuse me, that the question was so broad in the asking that that is properly answered yes. Would it be more on the creative side of entertainment than the exhibition side of entertainment? I would stress that the question was so broad in its asking that we felt we could answer it yes, the other one, but you've got a no on that, Bennett. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Is the uh, area so broad that our guest is, uh, could not be considered a performer then in any of the arts? Not an actor, hmm? Yes. Yes, he is not an actor. Yes, he is not an actor, But there no. is something entertaining about what he does. Uh, it has been said uh, by competent authority on many occasions that uh, there was something entertaining about what he does, yes. Uh -huh. uh, do people come to him rather than his going out to them? We don't know what How do you know it's a doing? he? It could be a she. No, it could be a she. We'd better find that out, hadn't we? Um, Ask some peripatetic questions. <laughs> well, my first peripatetic question is, are you a he? I thought Bennett was the only one on the panel that had that peripatia. You all got it? <laughs> We're all polysyllabic here, John. Uh, um, oh, boy, something in the entertainment. It is a man. It is a man. Uh, I'll pass to Martin. All right, I will say this. I will ask our guest now to use uh, his own voice and not the whistle, and I think that will probably give you a better chance. Mr. Gable? Do you do something in the entertainment world in a second position, such as be an agent or something of that kind. Mm -mm. That makes it three down and seven to go, <laughs> Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with music? Mm -mm. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Are you, a, are you appearing at the present time in a show on Broadway? Mm -mm. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. And yet your voice would be well known to us. Do you have a foreign accent? Would that give you away? Mm -mm. No? <laughs> yes and no. I would say, Arlene, that a part of the recognition of the voice might well be uh, a result of some appreciation of an accent that isn't as common as everyday speech might be in the area from which our friend comes. Shoo! <laughs> Loads. Uh, would you be known uh, by people, by almost all people in the theatrical business or mm. in the picture business? Pardon me? Mm. Yes? That's, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, do you operate uh, on one of the coasts primarily, either the eastern coast or the western coast rather than Midwest? Mm. Uh, Whatever you do, do you do it in New York? <clears throat> Six down and four to go, Mr. Gable. Then you do well, what you do mostly on the West Coast. <clears throat> Are you connected principally with the movie business? <clears throat> now, I think there, again, if our guest will permit, since we accepted the question having to do with entertainment in so broad a sense, we will now qualify this negative answer, Martin, to the extent of saying that to the degree that there is a relationship with the entertainment world, mm -hmm. that relationship may be described as principally with the movie industry. I do feel that, yes. Uh, am I to take it that you do not perform yourself in the entertainment world before, directly before the public? Mm. Is that a no? No, that's a yes. <laughs> yes, you do not perform. I take the one blast to be yes, and the sort of uh, staccato repeat to be no. Yeah, well, you understand, that's not the whistle anymore. Got you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yes, on the other hand, it's not quite a voice. <laughs> but it is a blast. Uh, do you instruct people who appear directly uh, how to do what they do? <clears throat> That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is your accent, uh, which is not quite indigenous to, let us say, this part of the United States, which would be a help in recognizing you, by any chance, an accent from below the Mason-Dixon line, or associated with that. <laughs> no, wait, not two to go, Mr. Sir. Do you do any kind of writing? <clears throat> Nine out of one to go, Miss Francis. Oh, no, we have tried that. Uh, do you do you run a place that people might like a nightclub or anything like that that might be famous, like uh, t well, twenty ones here. Romanoff. Romanoff. Roman. Mm. Oh, that's who it is, Alja. I think you did it. Uh, do you so uh, uh, do you have a uh, large and enormously successful restaurant in California? Yes. Has my oh, husband my paid his bill? <laughs> <laughs> Mike Romanoff. You write, you're writing a memoir. You should have told me you <laughs> no, do write. No, but that is incidental to why he, his basic occupation, Bennett. Oh. Prince Mike Romanoff, who is, what, 17, 18, 19 years you've been running your restaurant? 17, now. Yeah. Well, he's got three now. Uh, yeah, I have one in uh, California, in uh, San Francisco. I remember it. Day. I remember it during Palm the convention. Springs, and up. building one in Palm Springs. Did you know he was coming? No. <laughs> I'd have guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I thought the minute we departed the whistle, that you get it. Yes. Is I thought Martin would get it. <laughs> well, Mr. I must say, sir, that we came very close to sticking them, and I'm grateful, because I like yeah. to stick them. May I give this to the Red Cross? Oh, positively. We'll take care okay. of it. Thank you very much. Consider that a very good beginning, no matter how you feel about it. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Would you come in and sign in, please? Evelyn Shilson, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Shilson? Mrs. Shilson, where are you from? Hamilton, Illinois. Hamilton, Illinois. Mrs. Shilson, the panel. Will you come over here now and sit down with me? Do you know how we keep score? Fine, then let's let everybody at home and our friends here know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right. Panel, Mrs. Shilson is self-employed. And Martin, you're so hot tonight, let's start things off with you. <laughs> I'm real cool, John. Is there, uh, Mrs. Stilson, a product connected with what you do? Yes. Uh, is it something that I could uh, uh, hold in my hand? Yes. <laughs> that laughter is significant. Is it, is it attractive? Yes. Uh, yeah. is, it, is it something that could be worn? Yes. <laughs> You'd look great. Well, no, I better leave that right there. <laughs> no, I better leave that right there, Martin. Um, does it uh, does it come in various colors? This object? Yes. Easter is coming up. Is it something my wife would wear in the Easter parade? <laughs> I've got two things to say. No, and I wish it were true. I'd love to see it. <laughs> That's one down of nine to go, Miss Gilgallon. But somebody can wear, wear, somebody or something can wear it at one time or another. It yes. is worn. Yes. Is it by any chance worn by a non-human at some time or other? Yes. That's why Arlene didn't wear That's it. That's why I look well in at the Easter parade. She's madly human. <laughs> well, I, that gave me the clue. Uh, and it comes in various colors. Yes. Uh, would it be, but it's worn by something alive? Yes. 
Would it be worn by a four-footed something alive? Yes. Or would it be anything as simple as a dog? No. That makes it two down a day to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Shilson, it's worn then by an animal that is larger than a dog, is that correct? Yes. Is it a domestic animal? Yes. Might it be in the horse family? Yes. Is it worn off sometimes by a horse? Yes. And it comes in different colors? <laughs> Might it, be a, might it be a plume of some kind that a horse would wear when it was in the circus or on, in a parade? No. No, that's well, three dollars seven to go, Miss Francis. But a horse plume? Sure. No, I wouldn't wear a horse plume, but I might wear a horse blanket. Is it anything... Don't and start have. to turn it. Is it, anything like, is it anything like a blanket on the horse, for no. the horse? No. Four dollars six to go, Mr. Gable. Sometimes uh, racehorses wear snoods. Would it be one of those... <laughs> <laughs> Can you miss horses often? Yes. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, is it something that the horse can take off? By himself? Well, I mean... <laughs> I mean, when he goes to sleep, he hasn't got this thing on. <clears throat> no, I would say that it's fair to assume that when he goes to sleep, he hasn't got it on. How he gets rid of it, that's another bit of business. <laughs> I was only trying to eliminate horseshoes. Ask you it's made of leather, Stephen. Yes, yeah. Sure. Is, is it ever made of leather? Of leather? No. No. That makes it six down and four to go, Mr. Seth. Not made of leather. Then is it made ever of metal? That makes it seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Does it hold anything? <laughs> no. Eight down and two to go, I Mr. Gable. Uh, is, is it worn under the saddle? <laughs> Is it worn? Is it normal to horses uh, to wear a thing of this kind? It's not yes. unique kind of horses that wear it. No, the horses that wear it are all very normal. Normal horses, horses yes. Don't go near <laughs> psychiatrists. Uh, is it more apt to be worn by race horses than by, say, circus horses? I wouldn't think so. No, actually, Martin, I think on the more than we have to knock yeah, you I off. I hope I didn't puzzle you all too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nine dollars, one to go, Ms. Kilgallen. It's, right. it's not metal and it's not leather, John, but no. it's worn by a horse. Yes. Is it worn from the shoulders up? <laughs> I'm just going to flip it anyway. I'm not going to get into that mess. Now, I tell you what Mrs. Shilson does. She makes false tails for horses. Princess Lisa. <laughs> I want the floor, Bennett, because I want to get this in before you do. That's some switch, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> now I'm happy. <laughs> you have to... Actually, Mr. This is a fascinating story. Mr. and Mrs. Shilson have a, a boarding, uh, board horses and take care of them, and the, many of them are show horses, and Mrs. Shilson noticed that some of their tails were like, well, you know, Why? sparse, so she got some horse hair and she made one, and now they make them all the time. Sort of a toupee business. Yeah. What are you doing Easter? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing Easter Sunday morning, Arlene? <laughs> and it's nice to have had you with us, Mr. Shilton. Thanks very much. Oh, nice to have had you with us. Just a moment, tonight's Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I have to ask my friends once again to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. Back on. Will you come in, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> All right, panel, as you know, in the case of our Mystery Challenger, we use a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time, moving clockwise, and we'll begin it all with... Miss Arlene. Well, I gather from that wild ovation that you must have something to do with appearing before the public, do you? Yes. Mr. Gable? Uh, are you a member of the film industry? Yes. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, do you ever sing? 
what you think now. That's one down mine to go, Mr. Sir. Are you uh, appearing in a picture that is in either on Broadway or about to open on Broadway? Uh, uh e yes. I think so. Miss Francis? Well, uh, is it um, about to open on Broadway rather than having already opened? No. That makes it two down a date to go, Mr. Gable. Are you female, just to establish that? Please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's still gallant. Uh, well, are you uh, a leading woman or um, an ingenue rather than a character woman? No. That makes it three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. You mean you are a character woman? Is that what that means? Yes. Yeah. Do you also play in the legitimate as well as motion pictures? Mm-hmm. Miss Francis? Well, from the ovation you received, you must be probably the leading character woman of all time. Are you... It would be dangerous to pick this one now. Yeah. If we're wrong, Mike Todd will get it. Yeah. Boy. Uh, well, are you... <laughs> are you primarily known for your appearances in the theater rather than in pictures? Yes. Mr. Gable, are you currently appearing in a play? Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. They're scared to name a character actress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Bennett, if you think you know, you're, you're a diplomat, go. Well, I'm going to play it safe and say, have you ever uh, essayed the role of Queen Victoria? What? <laughs> it, it is Helen Hayes. Yes. It is Helen Hayes. I don't think it was fair of Miss Hayes to describe herself as a character woman. She's the great leading woman of all time. Well, actually, Mark, actually, that is one of those questions where I agree with you entirely, but Dorothy had added ingenue to explain it was <laughs> to give too much away. You <laughs> That's see, we had to leave it just sit there. I agree with you fully. Miss Hayes is the great leading Daddy Long Legs, Miss Hayes was one of the great ingenues of all time as well, you see. We've now covered the entire arc. I, I bet, I'm loving this. I, Go right on. I bet, I, bet, uh, I bet Miss Hayes would like to say something about her son, too. Oh, I would. He wanted so much to be here tonight, but he had a natural science exam tomorrow at Harvard, so he had to skip it. Isn't He's it too bad? He's marvelous in the picture, Helen. Thank you, Eileen. Just charming. Yeah, I think this needs only for those who might not quite understand the reference. James MacArthur, Mrs. MacArthur, and Miss Helen Hayes' son is getting to be as famous in the movies as uh, Mother is in the movies and the theater, and I know it must be a source of great pride to you. Of course, he's a Harvard man. And my son <laughs> is up at Yale, and he won't speak to me for a couple of weeks because I'm in the <laughs> But one thing, what is the, one of the busiest women in this world busying herself with these days? Well, John, the thing that I'm uh, doing that I think is the most exciting right now is um, working on the fun drive for the... Uh, Mary MacArthur Memorial Respirator Center up at uh, Wellesley Hills, Massachusetts. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, which was uh, set up in memory of my daughter Mary. And, and um, we've been doing wonderful work for eight years in uh, helping people, young and young adults and children who have been stricken with very severe respirator uh, ailments, respiratory yeah, ailments. And... Uh, they say it's hard to get uh, your money's worth for a dollar today, but we think that we have a very good uh, offer. We offer you a stake in amended life for a dollar. So if any of your viewers are interested in spending a dollar very happily, if they'll just send it to me, Helen Hayes, at Box 222, New York, uh, I think they'll get a lot of pleasure out of it. Box 222, New York, and we heartily recommend you do just that.
Please do it for us. Miss Helen, thanks so much. <laughs> Well, I think the panel wound up in a blaze of glory, but we gave them a real rough early part of the evening. And on that happy note, until next week, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Arlene. Good night. Good night for now, Martin. Good night for now, Arlene. Good night, Dorothy. <laughs> good night, for Martin. Now. For now. <laughs> good night, Bennett. What's the weather going to be this week, Mr. Daly? I have nothing to do with the weather, thank you. <laughs> I ducked a lot of trouble last week. I have no intention of getting in any more trouble with the weather. I'll talk about it, but I'm not going to try to do anything about it anymore. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Life. Transportation for What's My Line was arranged by American Airlines. Guests are flown to New York aboard America's famous luxury flight, the DC-7 Mercury. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's other great television program, Gunsmoke, Saturday night on this same network.